there beautiful people today as you can see from the title of this video i'm going to be doing an updated version of exactly how i make my labels for jars bottles for seven skin co and today we're just going to be covering that i'm going to pop in and out of this video just giving you guys tips of exactly what it is that i'm doing i do have an older much older video um, that shows how i made labels which of course you can still watch for reference but i definitely recommend this method a lot um, a lot better and there are pretty much two versions of how you can make these labels um, and how you can cut them but both versions start off with Canva. I always start off with Canva, Canva to design my labels, create my labels. Um, it's just the most efficient. Um, there are more offerings that are on Canva versus any other platform that helps you to create content or create um, labels or anything like that. So I like to start off here. Plus there are a ton of templates, so I highly suggest going on Canva first, um, which I think I've shown you guys in multiple videos before. I will have a um, playlist linked up in the cards above in case you are interested but this is where I always start out um, so here you're just gonna watch me kind of go through my labels I'm double checking them I like to check them just to make sure everything's right the ingredients are right spelling is correct I did go ahead and switch up a couple fonts on these labels so that is what I'm doing now but yeah definitely check out Canva highly recommend grabbing Canva Pro as well it is worth the $12 a month um, especially if you are creating Instagram content, um, even things for TikTok, even if you're creating things for YouTube channels, whatever, Canva is definitely the GOAT. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to go ahead, finish this part up, and then I'll be right back. So like I told you guys, there are pretty much two different ways that I will make labels. Um, and it's more so the cutting process and the actual um, final steps of the labels, the printing and all that, that is a little bit different depending on really what I'm filling, the size of the jar, how many I have to do. Um, for this particular, in this particular video, I was getting ready for a restock. So I literally had over like 60 or 70 labels to do and I just was not going to hand cut all of these labels. So, um, for the sake of my personal time, I did bust out my Cricut, which let me tell y'all, Cricuts are becoming more common, more business owners are grabbing them, um, and they're just more, very versatile no matter what business you have. Um, I actually saw someone recommend the other day to go on Facebook Marketplace to actually purchase a Cricut, and I, if you can, if you can. Um, just because you can make so many things for your business and it's just, it's a great investment to be honest. It's one of my most used business investments. Um, it was definitely worth it. You can also find like a monthly, um, paid sort of plan where you can pay for it monthly. There are just so many options, but even if you don't have a Cricut, you do not need necessarily need a Cricut at all. You can go through your entire business without one. Um, it just, it saves time. And like I said, there are a lot of different things you can create. So if you do have a Cricut and you want to know exactly how I um, do this labeling process, it's pretty self-explanatory if you know how to use your Cricut and you follow, you know, normal manuals. But all I do is save all of the labels that I'm going to be printing to my computer, save them to my desktop from Canva. Very simple. Um, you just download them and save them. Um, and I'll insert a small clip here just in case you don't know how to download the labels. You'll see it in just a second. But once you go ahead and download the labels, you want to go into Cricut and you want to upload the labels as you see me doing now. Um, you're just going to go to the upload tab and simply drag and drop the label from wherever you saved it from, whether that be your desktop or a specific file. Um, and then I always like to choose the complex um, option or setting for printing just so that I can get the best quality print of the label. If not, um, the printer is just going to use less force and Cricut is going to basically um, adjust the label so that it is just a lower quality version of whatever your label is and I don't want that I want people to be able to see read 
um, exactly what it is that is on the label so I go ahead and pick comp complex depending on how much is on the label I will pick the option that's before that I forget what it's called um, but it's kind of like the middle ground in between so just depending on the label but for the most part I grab complex especially if you have a lot of logo based text and logos and things like that on your label I would highly suggest picking the complex version um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and lay the labels out now the other way that you can do this is you can download all of the labels open up a simple word file on your computer or a simple um, you can even go to Google Docs which is something that I have done before um, and you basically will just save or do the exact same drag and drop process on a Google Doc or a word file or um, the pages if you have an, a MacBook whatever drag and drop your label onto that page and then you're gonna go to the sizing options which will be kind of in your file or your edits um, especially if you're using Google Docs or Word um, just go to the editing section and you're just gonna want to size the label to exactly what you need now um, I'm gonna do a, a second part to this video a little bit more detail of the actual design process so stay tuned for that um, but these labels in particular, I believe are four by two. So they're four, um, by two inches. And, um, yeah, that's just how I size them. I just size them until I see the numbers pop up and say four by two. So they're all cohesive, all the same length and all the same width. Um, and so of course they're two inches in length and then four inches in width. And it's pretty easy to size them on a Cricut. Um, again, if you don't have it, Word, Notes, Google Docs, if you don't have Word, you do not. Google Docs, actually, I would suggest, especially because it'll automatically save your projects. You can always go back and use the exact same thing and reprint, you know, whatever you've created. But if you have a Cricut, you can lay them out this way and they will basically cut. I actually almost would recommend Google Docs as well, just because you could probably fit more on a page. Whereas you see here, I can only fit five labels at a time. Um, my label sheets are 8x5, which I will insert a clip of the label sheets, um, and I'm going to insert clips of all the supplies that I use as well at the end of this video, so stay tuned. But yeah, um, printing the labels on Cricut, and when I print, I also turn off the bleed option. I don't want these labels to smudge, I don't want the printer to try to en over enhance anything, so I turn the bleed option off because that sometimes can happen. I honestly do not know what the bleed option means. I just know that I've used it before and it will kind of in overly enhance fonts on my labels and I do not like that. Um, got some new mats, had to go grab some new Cricut mats because y'all my mats are old. So these are the standard mats. If you can, um, I do have the blue mats which are the light, it's just that they don't hold paper very well so I ended up having to get some standard ones. Um, but these, when I tell y'all, be very careful using these standard mats if you decide to get them because they will hold on to your paper for dear life. So just be very careful. Um, but as you saw, those were how the labels printed and I am using shiny label paper, um, just because I had it and I was like, why not? But if you get the matte full sheet label paper, you will be okay because we are using laminating paper. Um, y'all remember I used to use laminating paper and I would actually have to cut the laminating sheets in half why didn't you all tell me that you could get sticky um self-adhesive laminating paper that's just one side nobody told me this <laughs> this came up in my amazon recommendations um and so i of course i had to grab it i was like i can finally use laminating paper again because cutting laminating paper in half and sending it through the lamination machine was just a lot of work and i would always mess up labels so this is a lot easier um, and then basically you're going to take a ruler, got this ruler from Dollar Tree, very simple, the laminating paper I showed you guys as well, it's not that expensive, you can get like 50 sheets for, I think I got these under 20 something dollars, um, but it's worth it, you know, it's worth it because it'll cover one entire sheet and it's going to make your labels glossy, it doesn't necessarily make them full on waterproof. Um, but if you do get some water on them or some oil on them, I did notice that they it doesn't necessarily seep through or show. I think that also has to do with the fact that I used glossy paper versus the matte as well. But the laminating paper does make them shinier, just makes them look a little bit more expensive. Um, gives off like that, you know, luxury quality, you know. Um, and my, my brand has kind of switched over to very much more 
you know, bright and fun. And I just feel like glossy paper just accentuates the label so well. Now, of course, if you're a more calm, soothing brand, you might want that matte look, which I have done in the past um, and still works, honestly. Doesn't, matte, the matte paper does the same job, gets the same job done. So th here you see me, after I lay the laminating paper, I use the ruler, like I said, to smooth it out. Just taking my scissors and gliding it along alongside of the laminating paper, um, which is very self-explanatory. You just want to cut off that extra, that excess, so that it does not kind of create an even more sticky surface for you to get your labels off of the mat. Now, of course, if you were not using a Cricut, we're going to jump really quick so that I can show y'all exactly how you would cut this. So say you put these labels in on Google Doc, you printed them off, you kind of spaced them out on your paper, um, you printed them on Word or just whatever. Um, we're going to fast forward really quick in just a second here and I'm going to show you how I use a paper cutter to cut these. So you can get any paper cutter. You do not need this Cricut paper cutter. It's just, I just have it. Um, but you can use any paper cutter. There are tons of options. If you go down the office aisle at Walmart, um, I'm going to show you in just a second. This is a separate day, so don't mind my dress and all this stuff. But um, I'm doing the exact same process. So I'm going to lay, and this is a better angle as well, but I'm going to lay the um, self-adhesive um, laminating paper down. And you see, like I said, um, I'm gliding the ruler down. One tip I have to keep this seamless so you don't get any air bubbles or anything stick the top of that um of that laminating sheet stick it to whatever surface you're working on so that you don't have the labels moving all over the place which is what i should have done and then if you want to avoid the air bubbles um by sticking it down it will help you to just glide the ruler down in one swipe because at some point you're going to see here i have to go back over it and kind of you know feather out those bubbles or just whatever the air to make sure that it looks seamless like it's just all one piece of paper again gliding my scissors across um, so that I can get rid of all the excess label just so that it's not sticking and you know making it harder for me to cut once I pull the paper cutter out again you can get paper cutters from just about anywhere Amazon Walmart I'm pretty sure you could probably find one at Dollar Tree too I don't know how amazing it's gonna be because you definitely want that cut to be crisp so you don't have any problems so I would you know, I would take a good $10, $15 and just splurge on a nice cutter. Um, this one in particular from Cricut is decent. Um, I, do, I do have a better lab or cutter. Um, it's just big. So, you know, the bigger ones, the bigger the cutter, the more expensive. Um, but they definitely have different options, different sizes. So I'm going to finish up these. Um, labels are here. Do the exact same process. Rudely ch checking my phone. Um, and the labels were all printing off at the same time right here. So, all right, let's cut. So this is what, um, the cutting process looks like. I kind of have already started, but you just want to ensure that you're lining up. This is the reason I love these cutters. Cause you just, you just line up, um, the cutter in between the spaces that are blank and you cut the labels. It's, I mean, once you get your cutter, y'all know what I'm talking about, but super simple um and not that hard to do um and i'm just making sure to get as close as i possibly can to the word because um the one thing about the cutter is uh you do want to make sure that your labels are the correct size and um i am kind of using the ruler on the opposite end to gauge that four by two um inch mark but honestly because the labels are spaced out correctly um, if you space them on Cricut, it kind of spaces it for you. That's the other benefit. But again, you do not need it. Um, if you use Google or Google Docs or use Word, you can turn on your page rulers, click the top of the page, turn on your margins, and just follow that so you can space out your space out your labels. Um, it's very simple. If you want to see a version of me doing this on Google Docs or on Word or on Pages, please let me know. I, I told you guys um, a little bit ago that I do have another part um, the part two to this label video. So if we need a more detailed part three showing a, uh, an actual like placement and all that stuff on Google Docs or Word or Pages, whichever one, um, just let me know and I will definitely do that. I'm pretty sure you could do this on Canva as well. Um, you could probably space these out on Canva. You would just have to create them on Canva, save them to your computer, and then kind of go back in and create a separate doc. But it's essentially the same thing. So whatever you need to do, 
just get that five um, eight 8.5 measurements by 11 um, that's the size of the paper and then space them out how they need to be spaced based on the actual label size like I said these are four by two so that is just what I'm using and I'm just cutting it between and to be honest they might be a little bit bigger than four by two um, size labels I think it might have been four by four point something and two point something but again um, that's up to you most jars I can tell you especially if you use an eight ounce um, in the previous label video I did show how to measure the label measure your jars but um, most eight ounce jars most six ounce jars a four by two label fits pretty well and these were going on um, these were actually going on what size were these going on six ounce jars maybe six or eight I can't remember um, exactly and then four ounce bottle so that size range fits pretty well and if I have different sizes I will just put it up on the screen so you guys know like I said I'll try to put as much in the comments or not in the comments but description box as well but that was just me cutting the labels with a, with a cutter just to show you guys and then of course you've seen this process multiple times if you have a Cricut um, then you know and if you've watched any of my previous videos just vlogs of me showing you guys labels this is exactly how I make them on the Cricut and the Cricut pretty much will cut them. The reason I like them is just because they get an ex reason I like to use a Cricut more often is like I said if I have a lot of labels to do and because the Cricut just gives an exact cut. Um, I just it makes it a lot easier on me. Um, I don't have the steadiest hands so that helps me out a lot. Um, and then as for this particular cut you do need to switch it if you do are using the, the Cricut. You do need to switch it to cardstock and switch it to the middle setting cardstock. Um, the middle or the last, just because this, um, remember the Cricut now has two pieces of paper essentially to go through, two pieces, two layers to go through. So you just wanna be mindful of that because if you try to do just the standard paper setting, you're gonna just be cutting the label and not the actual paper. And the, the needle needs to get down all the way to get through both surfaces, so that's that and then that's pretty much it I just take these off and I'm going to show you exactly how these labels look up close again the whole concept here is to be using some type of full sticky paper um, full what it full sheet label sticky paper and laminating sheet um, but the cutting option is up to you um, and this is what this is okay I'm not upset that these are kind of detached from the actual um, inner of the paper just because they're coming off anyway but uh, you still have to use the card stock setting because if not like I said you will just be cutting the label and you will not be cutting the actual paper so yeah these are six ounce jars and I'm pretty sure that I popped the measurement of these jars is probably still on the screen right now I just haven't done it yet but um, showing you this is what the labels look like they just look so much more professional and I love the glossy finish like I don't know if I'm going to go back to the mat anytime soon, especially for my butters. Um, and I just I just enjoy the glossy finish. It protects them a little bit more, especially because you're using a product that has some oil base to it, butter base to it. So this is going to just help. And they are super easy to stick on. Um, and that's pretty much it. The pretty simple process. Again, it's the full sheet label paper and the laminating sheets. That is the key to this. That is the real... The two stars of this entire video is using those two things I wanted to, wanted to just highlight that but the cutting process again is different you could even if you have the time and if you have steadier hands than I grab your ruler and go to town with your scissors and just cut what you need I mean honestly y'all that's exactly how I, I started out just using a ruler if y'all saw that first label video I wasn't even using lamin laminating paper I was using packing tape so if you are depending on your budget you might have to you know move some things around just do what you got to do so that your products look branded put together and actually like you know you put some effort behind them and it doesn't matter how it gets done as long as it gets done and it looks clean it looks branded like I said it looks professional you're good to go so either of these videos are going to be helpful um, don't feel like just because you don't want to spend the money on the laminating paper or the full sheet paper or the Cricut paper or the Cricut or just whatever that you just have to have it in order for your stuff to look right. Um, this is just kind of an elevated version of, you know, 
what you can do as your business grows, if you have the funds, whatever. But please use utilize both the videos at your discretion. Um, I get a lot of backlash for that particular video because people are telling, you know, commenting on there saying you could have just used laminating paper, you could have just used regular label paper. Um, but I don't think even at that time I knew that. And um, like I said, you have to start your business out where you can afford it. And as long as you're putting the effort behind, the branding behind, um, it comes off as professional. As long as you are just being professional and carrying your business as professional, you will be good to go. So don't let people stress you out on what method you choose. <laughs> just do it with some class, you know what I'm saying? And get the job done. Um, everyone has to start out somewhere. So that's that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful and I will talk to you in the next one. Like I said, stay tuned. If you have more label video questions, comment down below. If you're looking for any um, custom like stickers or anything like that for your business, make sure you click check the description box as well um, and check out 7 Customs and I will talk to you guys in the next video.